think it's time for us to begin. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Greg Story. I'm the president of Dale Tony Training here in Japan. And we are using an opportunity, really, to give something back to the community. We have across the world the Dale Tony what we call our Global Day of Giving. And it coincides always in October with our anniversary, 22nd of October is when Galatini started the company 107 years ago, it's going to be 108. So in Japan, we look for opportunities to work in whole different groups by giving them training which normally they wouldn't get exposed to and which they possibly wouldn't have the opportunity to access. So you're able to get that today. I think a few more of the team will be arriving, but we should, we should get going. So let me invite you to think a little bit about what you want to get out of tonight, because I'm going to give you a certain raft of skills to help you in life and in your careers, but there may be other things that I can add to it depending on what's going to be helpful for you. I'll tell you a little bit about Dale Cunningham first, so you have an idea about our organisation and what we do, and then I'll ask you what you'd like to get out of tonight, and then I'll launch into it. Alright, so let's begin. So, as I said, on. Dale Carnegie is a soft skills specialist training company. We've been going for 107 years. We train in more than 25 languages around the world. It's probably closer to 35 to 25. We've been in Japan for 56 years. We are the oldest training company in Japan in the area of business training. We have over 200 offices globally, so we're a very big international organization. We have been going through a thing called ISO, it's an international standards organization for training or any other organization to make sure that your systems are very robust. We have that ISO 9001 certification. And basically, Sweden is about 8 million people. So our graduates would populate more than the country of Sweden. So that gives you an idea how many graduates there are. It's probably, 8 million I think is a conservative number, it's probably much more than that. So this is our coverage around the world. And as you can see, we started in America. So America is very, very well popular, but all around the world, we've got offices delivering training, what we're doing today. And we have some famous graduates. Now, you may not know some of these people, but you may have heard of Warren Buffett. He's probably the most famous and most successful businessman investor of all time. Uh, President Ronald Reagan, you probably may have heard of Ronald Reagan. Uh, Chuck Norris, very famous uh, actor, one of my, one of my favorites. Uh, in Japan, we've got some very famous people. We have uh, Murakami-san, ex-chairman of Google. We have Uotani-san, the current president of Shiseido. And some of you might know, that's called Total Fish, who founded the Fish Foundation. She's very famous in America, lived there most of her life. She's been awarded by the emperor. She's also a graduate. So we have many, many famous graduates around the world, including Japan. And Dale Kalegi was born in Missouri in 1881. In America now, sorry, 1888, I should say. That's very much in the middle of America. Typical American, what we call, you know, American dream. Started with nothing, very poor family, became extremely successful. And his first job out of university was selling. He was selling across the Midwest area of America, uh, selling for a company called Armour, selling a whole range of products, very successful. And he thought he'd become an actor. He thought he'd become a movie star. So he saved up his money. He went to the most prestigious acting school in New York to become an actor. And like many actors, you discover that it's very hard to become a professional actor and be successful. And at some point, he realized, I'm not going to make this. It's very hard. But some of his classmates did make it. They were successful. And so he decided, what can I do for my profession? He decided, well, I was really enjoyed debating, public speaking at university, I'll become a teacher of public speaking. And 
He tried to get different jobs as a public speaking lecturer with universities, no success. And finally, the YMCA decided to do a joint venture with him. He would run the classes and they would share the money down the middle. In those days, you paid the money each time you went. So he learned very quickly. If you didn't deliver a lot of value, people didn't come back. So he was very successful, Warren Sam was very successful, he worked out very, very well. And so over the period of time, he realized people needed more than public speaking. He decided that I need to broaden out what I'm doing here to help business people succeed. It's not just the presentation side of things, there are other elements. So he brought it out. And over 24 years, he worked on that. Then he wrote a book called, was published called How to Win Friends and Influence People. What we would say today is that book went viral. It went viral. And today we have social media, we have so much access to information. Back then you had radio. TV hadn't been invented. You had radio, and you had magazines, and you had newspapers. Despite that, despite that, he immediately went to the top of the bestseller list with his book around the world. His book's being translated immediately. It was an absolute sensation. Hugely successful. His own radio program at NBC. He did a number of things to expand his network, expand his training organization, and it's just kept on expanding. So uh, basically, he first came to Japan in 1932, which in those days, you know, something like I heard the other day, not the new congressman in America, something like, uh, you know, there's some big proportion of them don't even have a passport, it's something like close to 40% don't even have a passport today. So Americans in those days didn't travel much. They certainly didn't travel to Asia much. But Dale Carnegie he came to Japan, he went to Korea, he went to China. He was very unusual, he went to India, he really explored the world. He was a very well-educated American in an era where Americans didn't travel much. So he saw a lot of the world, he got a lot of influences. And he came back again in 1939, twice, came back for 39 twice, and then again came back in 1953. So again, unusually, he'd been to Japan a lot of times, knows Japan quite well. Then he started Dale Carnegie in Japan in 1963. He actually passed away in 55. So it was actually his wife, his wife, Dorothy, who took the company international. And it's interesting, in those days, uh, women were not thought of to be executives. Your job? Homemaker. Men run the business. I right, we're talking 1955. The war's been over for 10 years. All the troops have come back. They go back in industry. They're having babies, they're having families, you know. She took over the company as a woman. In 55, that was a big deal. Like today, you wouldn't think about it. Right? Of course. You know. But back in 55, that was a big deal. And a lot of the instructors who'd been working for Dale Carnegie said, look, you're a woman, you can't run this company. Give it to us, we'll run it. And she said, yeah, well, thank you very much for your opinion. I'm going to run it. And she got around her well-trained, well-capable people to be leaders in the organization. And she took it internationally. So Dale Carnegie really did it for America very, very well. But she really took the company internationally. So where Japan is part of that process, 60th, Three we started here. That was under her presidency. And so we've been here a long time, long, long time in Japan, very well established. So Dale Carnegie in Japan, very successful. Uh, these are some of the Japanese translations. These have been translated. There's over 9 million copies of these two books, which is a lot of copies to be translated. So very successful. So I'm going to ask you now just to think for a moment. What are some priorities and outcomes for you from the session tonight, right? What would you like to get out of tonight? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about that, and then I'm going to write them up on this sheet of paper here. And you tell me, what would be something that would help you? Because you're going to, if you're not already in your careers, you'll be in your careers at some stage. You'll be doing different things, of course. But what are you going to do tonight that will help you take your career to a high level, and help you to be successful. All right, so just spend a couple of minutes, just think about that, and then I'll pick up your answers in a minute. Any questions? We all good? A little bit of thinking time. Where you go. Let's see how we go. So, 
help me out here. What would help with you? Okay, being a fellow Aussie, we'll go straight to the Aussies. They're always very brash, outgoing, and opinionated. <laughs> so we're guaranteed to get something out of them. So what can we do to help you tonight? Prepare to be disappointed. Sorry? Prepare to be disappointed because it's not brash. <laughs> oh, well, I'll be the brash one. What can we do to help you? Um, what do you want to get out of tonight? I, obviously, I think everyone wants the same thing. I want to kind of hone myself to kind of focus on a, a particular direction because I, right now I feel kind of like I have a lot of things going on in my life, but I don't really have like a clear cut direction right now. So you're trying to find some direction? Yeah, direction. Okay, that's good. Yeah, okay, convention. What did you think about? In your, what would you like to do in your interviews? Um, be more confident. Be more confident. Okay, more confident. Right. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah, if, we, if you've already got what you're thinking, just let me know. What would you like to get out of tonight? How to be persuasive, perhaps, right? How to be persuasive. You come to the right place. What can we do for you today? Have the same thing. Same thing. Be more persuasive. Yeah, I got you. Um, I would say um, how to negotiate with negotiations. Good negotiation skills, okay? Yeah. Yeah, how about you? Um, I also want to explain the direction and the book of the so we've already got that. You're yeah, good. You're good. Have it to some. Like how to showcase myself. How to showcase yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Okay. Who have I missed? What would you like to do? I just want to speak English in a relaxed environment. Speak English in a relaxed environment. Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether the high power Dale Carnegie training is going to fit into that category, but we'll do our best. What can we do for you? Uh, same, persuasive and also. Be persuasive, yes. Leadership. Leadership, okay. okay. Hmm. Nice. Who have we missed? What would you like to do? Yeah. Be succinct. Right? Be succinct when you're explaining things. Yeah, great. How about you? Um, I'm wondering how to make a uh, real connection instead of superficial connection to all strangers. Okay. Establish deep connections. I'll put that down. So have I missed anybody? Have I missed anybody? Is everyone good? Have we got everything? You all good? Well, we're going to try and work on one. I don't think we'll get to all of these necessarily, but we'll we'll try and get some of them for you anyway. One of the things you're going to find in business or in life is you're going to have a different opinion to other people. You've probably got it now. And most of us, we have trouble with that. When we have someone who disagrees with us, it can go wrong very quickly. It can start to get into a bit of a personal struggle, power struggle, over who's right and who's wrong, and whose opinion you know, should be taken and whose advice should be taken. And in organisations, this can cause big problems. I've worked in big organisations, and you've got these silos, organisational structures that are broken into silos. And you can get two leaders having an argument at the top of that silo and all the troops down that silo start fighting with each other because these two had a disagreement. Right? 
Or you can have a workmate or someone in your circle you disagree with, and suddenly your relationship goes bad. It was a good relationship, now not going so well. We're going to learn how to avoid that. We're going to learn how to have a disagreement with someone. Don't give up our opinion. Don't retreat, but don't have an enemy. Now, with women, it's very common for women in business to step back and not argue their case. It's very common for women to give up their opinion to suit, particularly with men they're dealing with. It's very, very common. A couple of years ago, Tucker son and I, we did this exact same program for how many is like a hundred ladies at this big conference for women in leadership. And we were teaching this skill because they've all got that problem. So what I'm going to teach you now is how to have your opinion communicated in a way that's going to disagree with the person you're talking to, but keep the personal relationship. Does that sound fair enough? Is that good? Because it's too easy for it to go the wrong way. It's so easy. Well, I think that's wrong. No, I'm right. No, you're wrong. Bang. Relationship destroyed right there. Right? There's no cooperation. And then you don't talk to each other. Right? You avoid each other. Well, in a business environment, you don't have that choice. You don't see that person every day. You might need that person's cooperation. There's many reasons why you need to keep a good relationship with someone you disagree with. And we're going to go through a few steps, concrete steps, and then practice it. We're going to have a disagreement. The thing we're going to disagree about is whether women in Japan should be allowed to keep their maiden names when they get married. Because by law now, you must change your name to your husband's name. Okay. We're going to have an argument about that. We're going to have a disagreement about that. At different times, you'll be arguing both ways. To practice, right? You're going to argue, no, no, women should change their name because it's more easy to understand in society who's with who and whose kids who and blah, blah, blah. Or, no, why shouldn't I keep my own name? Why do I have to give up? Like in China, they don't do that. They keep their name. Why does Japan have to have an agent? There are many arguments, and we'll, um, you will have no trouble, I know, no trouble coming up with the arguments. And we're going to use that particular debate to practice having an argument and disagree with each other, but in a way that doesn't destroy the relationship, it doesn't create a bad feeling, and you don't get into a big fight about it. Okay? Okay, that's what we're going to do today. So, I'm going to teach you a process to organize your thoughts when you get into a disagreement. We're going to learn how to communicate our ideas even when we disagree. We're not going to give up our ideas. As I said before, for a lot of women, they just back off. They give up. They stop debating because they don't have a bad relationship. Don't have to do that. Stand your ground. Stand your ground, but don't have an argument with someone. We learn how to do that. And then, how to provide evidence in a way to back up what we think to make sense to the person we're talking to. That's where we go. So, when we hear something we don't agree with, if you think that women should have their own name, as a surname, and not have to adopt the husband's name. When someone says that, I think it's ridiculous. These women, these livers, you know, they all want to keep their own name. It'll be chaos in society. Kids won't know who their parents are. When you hear that, you're probably thinking, what a bunch of, if you disagree with it, what a bunch of rubbish. That's stupid. Why would you think that? Your brain is going to go into an opinion, yes or no. Or you might agree with it. You might say, well, I agree with that. Presume you disagree with it for the exercise, right? Before we react, though, we put a break up. Here's the problem. The distance between here and here is too close. When we hear something we don't like, boom! Out it goes. We say something. 
Can't take it back. Can't take it back. Once you said it, you can't take it back. Without thinking, bang, you react. We're going to learn to respond, not react. What's the difference? What's the difference, react or respond? What do you think? No, we go through a chemical reaction, physiological chemical reaction. We call it fight or flight. When we were living in caves, we went outside and we saw a big saber-toothed tiger. We either fought with it and lived, or we ran away and escaped. So in our bodies, when we hit some problem, we either want to fight with it or flight. So when people disagree with us, our emotions can trigger the chemical reaction of fight, which is where we get into that argument. And it's not something that you think about, because as soon as your brain gets a trigger signal, out go the chemicals. And that's why sometimes with public speaking, you ever had this experience? You're doing public speaking, this funny feeling in your stomach? It feels very, oh, that feels so good, my tummy feels a bit strange. That's, the reason for that is physiological. It's fight or flight. The body, from the brain, the brain saying, danger zone, you've got to speak in front of people, you don't like doing that, that's stress pressure. Right, you've got to prepare to fight or flight. So they move all the blood out of the organs, and they move it to the thighs to run, or to the shoulders and the arms to fight. And the blood drains out of your stomach. And that's why you feel a bit weird in the stomach. Same thing. When you get that disagreement, your reaction, rather than response, would be chemical. Suddenly, pulse rate goes up, heat, heat up, get ready to fight and argue. That's the reaction. We have to stop that. We have to respond. The respond is, I think, and then I'm going to do, as opposed to I hear, and boom, out it goes. That's the chemical reaction straight away. So we've got to fight against our physiological structure mentally to stop that. You can't stop it, actually, but you can control it a bit. The secret is, don't let this distance keep you. You've got to have a breakup. So the breaker here is, when someone says, if you disagree with the statement, oh, it's ridiculous, all these women's livers, they want to have their own name and a big chaotic in society. When you hear that, before you even think about responding, you think, well, I disagree with that. Here's the very key point. Why do I disagree with that? First of all, you ask it, why do I disagree with that? That's the first thing you do. You start to think about, well, why do I believe they should have their own name, if that's what you believe? Why do I believe that? You start to check your self-awareness on your own belief. Now, the second thing you do is you say something, you say something, but it's not an answer to that opinion. It's what we call a cushion. You hear something, you put a cushion between hearing it and saying something, responding. Now that cushion is a statement that neither agrees nor disagrees with a comment from that person. This is how you stop the reaction and you flip it to a response. Now a cushion would be a very neutral statement. Oh, it's ridiculous, these women livers, they want to have their own names, it's going to be chaos in society. The cushion would be, well, it's very important that we have families well organised. It's very important we have families well organized. That doesn't agree with the statement. It doesn't disagree with the statement. It's very important that we have families well organized. It takes about five seconds for me to say that. So when I hear that response, I don't answer straight away. I pause. I think. Well, why do I think what I think? But I say the cushion to give me more thinking time about how I'm going to respond. I'm putting a breaker between this and this. Now, theoretically, that sounds pretty easy. And it is easy. But in the heat of the moment, boom, this can pop out. 
So we've got to learn to stop that. We've got to learn to stop that. As soon as we feel we're going to react, we say, no, I'm not going to react. I'm going to respond. Why do I believe the opposite of what I just heard? What's a neutral statement I can use to think about how I'm going to answer what they have just said? And while you're doing that cushion, you're thinking, okay, neutral statement, how am I going to answer this? I'm going to answer this in a way where I don't use words like but or however. If I, if I say to you, well, look, I think that's very reasonable about women having their own names, but what does your brain say? As soon as you hear but or however, your brain is saying, here it comes, here it comes, here comes the argument, here comes the disagreement, get ready to fight. That's what we're thinking, as soon as we hear those trigger words. So we don't use those trigger words. We don't use those trigger words. And is a great word. So if you want to use the word instead of but or however, use the word and. Well, that's a very, that's a very interesting idea about women of those names. And something as opposed to but or however, because we are conditioned. As soon as we hear but or however, we start to fight. We start to oppose the person. So we have to switch it up, right? So we're going to say something else. Now we might say, well, my evidence tells me, I'm making this up now, right? My evidence tells me that there are societies outside of Japan where culturally women keep their family name when they marry. And they seem to manage quite well. And China is an example I'm thinking of right now where ladies don't change their name when they get married. I mean, there's a lot of Chinese people, I think it's you know, 1.4 billion, and they've been around for a very long time, very old civilization, and they seem to have managed it. So I'm sure in Japan we could probably manage it too. Let's hear how that goes. I'm responding with a thoughtful argument because I gave myself a bit of thinking time as opposed to boom! Out came the first thing I was thinking of. The first idea that popped into my mind is what I said. That first layer may not be the best argument. And it usually isn't. Have you ever had this experience? You've been talking to someone, and then a few hours later, you think, you know, I should have said that. And I didn't think of it at the time. We've all had that experience, right? And you kick yourself. Come back, I've got a great idea I want to tell you. <laughs> Too late. They're gone. This is how you do that instantly. You don't respond. You say, I don't like that. I know the chemicals are going to kick into gear here. I know the adrenaline is going to hit my physiological system. I know that I'm likely to say something I should really respond with rather than react with. So I'm going to slow it down. First of all, why do I think what I think? Get that clear in my mind. Hit it with a cushion, a little bit more thinking time. We're probably up to about 10 seconds of thinking time. We're smart. We're smart. You don't have to go to Torah to be smart. We're all smart. We're smart enough to go to our second or third considered opinion before we speak. We can all do that if we give enough time. Right? So we get to Something based on evidence, or you can tell a story. For example, look, it's women livers, ah, they got this stupid idea that, you know, they're going to keep their maiden name when they get married. It's going to be chaos in society. Well, you know, how we organize families in society is a very important issue. I had a friend at university, and she was from China, and she was married. And very interestingly enough, I discovered that in China, the ladies when they get married, they don't change their name, they keep their maiden name. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I grew up in Australia where everyone changed their name. I thought about that, I thought, wow, 
You know, if a country of the size of China, 1.4 billion, thousand years of history, if they can manage to organize their society with the ladies keeping their maiden names so they get married, well, you know, maybe Japan could work it out too. It doesn't seem that impossible. There's my argument. I'm telling a story. I had a friend at university. She was Chinese. She was married. She told me about this. I understood they had a civilization, big population. There's all my evidence, right, about why Japan could do it too. See how we go? As opposed to, no, 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 they should be able to keep their name. Totally different approach. So this is what we've got to try and work on. How can we come up with a system that's going to allow us to do that? So that was round one. That was round one. How did that go? What did you find easy? What did you find difficult in that? What was easy? What was difficult? Yeah. Um, difficult. Um, I was coached at the end, but I think for the three of us, it was very hard to kind of come up with new ideas because we listened to so many other ideas. So I think those were stuck in our head while we were trying to present. So maybe we could have thought a little bit more um, before actually speaking. Yeah, more evidence or a yes. different angle or something, yeah. What else was either easy or difficult? What was easy or difficult? Not easy. Ah! Did you use the word but? I, I, I feel myself say it. Yeah. About but to say it, were you? And I, and I think it's also because of the way we're taught to uh, come up with arguments in academic situations. You yeah. always want to give like a balanced side. So you always, even though you like spend a lot of time arguing for one side, you always end up having to add a but or however, and it's, it's a habit, isn't it? Yeah, it's a This is why, this is why, when they hear the word but, the chemicals go off. Mm -hmm. Same problem. As soon as you can say bloody 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 blah, but their chemical reactions go into fight mode immediately. Now you've got a bigger problem. Now they start to dig in. So that's why we take that word out. We don't trigger their chemical reaction. Right? We get them open to our opinion. What was easy or hard? Did you have your hand up a minute ago? Oh, I did. You did, go ahead. Yeah, I was the same as Emily. I found it really difficult. I actually found myself saying that once, and you called me, so that was awkward. I have to hear it too. What did I hear? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I totally agree with Emily because that's how we're taught. Like from the moment we learn how to persuade, how to argue, if you want a better word, because argue is really confrontational, just how to bounce off of each other with opinions and ideas, but always comes into that equation. It's really difficult to like, get around that. So that's where, why do I think what I think? Cushion, little breaker, little breaker between here and here. So you learn to eliminate, but any of the other things that came out? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no. Person responds to the question back. Why do you think like that? And then another one is like giving positive reaction. That's interesting. Like that. So this kind of uh, with that reaction, the person who's asking also have this positive or negative way of reaction back to listening to your your reflection. Or something. Well, that's a good one. Why do you think that? That that's a good way to get the pressure off yourself. For example. If you ever get into a, the sales area, negotiation area, so we got that up here. When people give you pushback, oh, your price is too high. Oh, I don't think that's going to work. You know, in the time you, you plan planning to do that, or I'm not satisfied with the, the delivery schedule, or whatever it might be, they say to you, no, it'll be fine. No, there's nothing wrong with their price. Let me tell you why it's good. We don't go there. We're taught in Dale Carnegie. Anyway, in sales, when they say your price is too high, we don't go into fight mode. We stop the chemical reaction. We respond. We say, well, thank you. Would you mind explaining or telling me why you think that? And then we learn to shut up and let them talk. And that way we learn a lot more about the background of their thinking. So it's a very good ploy to get them talking. While they're talking, what are we doing? We're relaxing. We're calming the chemicals down. We're thinking to our fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth depth level of response. So when we're ready, bang! We've got a really good one to come back with, right? Because we've really thought it through. And the else came up. 
One thing you might find is a good trigger to get us on the right path is go into a story. Instead of thinking about some logical idea, tell a story and have the logical idea inside the story because you will think something, not by accident. You'll have an opinion based on a reason. To be something that happened in your life that gave you an idea, an opinion on that subject. Go back to that. Go back to that. And tell that story. Because that's the essence of where your belief comes from. We don't have opinions by accident. It comes through our education, it comes through our learning, it comes through our parents, it comes from our, our religion, depending on what it is. It's not an accident we have opinions. What's the root of your opinion? Why do you think that? And tell that story. Okay? All right. Stand up again, please. In our groups, we're going to have a little bit of a debrief. This is a technique you've learned tonight. Right? Very simple technique. Theoretically, it's simple to understand. Practically, not easy to do. Right? But you've had a bit of practice and you will like to stop yourself from saying but, however, arguing with people, to come in with evidence, to slow it down, control and respond rather than react. You've learned how to do that. In your groups, have a little discussion about how you can use this in your current situation and thinking about future situations in work where you'll be able to use it. Where could this play out for you? All right, everyone understand the question? Let's take it into real world situations now and think where you can apply this ability when you do run into disagreements with people. Everyone clear? Please have a discussion in your groups. Where you go. Are we bound to have disagreements? In the family, friends, work? It's going to happen, aren't they? Tonight, you've learned a very simple intervention to go from reacting to responding. And you had lots of practice. You had to overcome your automatic habits. If you could do it once in here and overcome your automatic habits, you just got to remember next time, first thing you hear that hint of disagreement, be thinking cushion. Don't be thinking answer. Right? This is the big difference. Don't be thinking the counter argument. Don't be thinking about my opinion. Go straight into, what's my cushion? What's my cushion? Give the cushion. In that brief period of time, those 10 seconds or so, you'd be amazed how much you can control and calm yourself down and then prepare yourself to respond in a much more effective way. If you can do that, you can have your own position defended have respect for the people you're dealing with and not getting into arguments where you've now broken the relationship. And breaking the relationship is very hard to rebuild. And there's plenty of relationships broken as a result of arguments where they just responded, or reacted, I should say, without responding, without thinking. The breaker, remember, the breaker is the key. It's too quick. You're going to go to the first reaction, it's too quick. Right, so, where do we go? I don't think we found too much direction tonight, did we? Probably didn't really get very far in finding you a direction in life. That's alright. But this is making you more confident. Being able to disagree with someone, I think that gives you a bit more confidence now, doesn't it? I can stand up in front of anybody and have a disagreement without ruining the relationship. You've got a means of dealing with it now, right? See if you did that. And by being heard, you see, by not saying but or no or however, they listen to you. They hear your side of the argument. They get some sense of why you think what you think. And often the background, the context is much harder to argue with when you know that. So I think you're going to be more persuasive. And this is a good negotiation skill, right? So you're not giving up your opinion. You're having a negotiation on how we're going to do this. I think that works. How to showcase yourself. If you can have a succinct discussion with someone and state your opinion in a way that doesn't create animosity or rejection, then you're going to stand out. Because everyone else will be going, yeah, well, but, well, that's good, I don't agree, however, or no, you're wrong. 
and they're going to get into a big fight, and you'll be the one who does it. You'll be the person who thinks, oh, they're a really nice person, I really get on with them, easy to work with, yes, we have our disagreements, but I like them. That's a big, that's a big plus, right? You're going to stand out. Now, who wanted to speak English in a more relaxed atmosphere? Did we get that done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Despite the, <laughs> despite the Dale Carnegie high tension, high pressure training here? Okay. Actually, while you're there, you can tick find direction. Can I? Yeah, because we, like, conversation direction. For oh, sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh. And learn how to, be, how to be more succinct, right? You've got to get that story going, very brief, key points. Yeah, I think you can do that, right? Establish deep connections. Well, this is how you establish deep connections. We can't say, oh, I'm never going to have a disagreement in my life again. Therefore, I'll never have this problem. No. You're bound to have this problem. It's going to come up. It'll come up tonight, probably, <laughs> with someone. Now you've got a solution. And once you do that, once you've got a solution that works, you can connect with people, keep a good relationship with people, have your own opinion, defend it, and still have people supporting you. I think we've probably got all, well, we've got all of them. Good job. We are done. Thank you very much. I hope this is helpful tonight.